Alright, what's up guys? Coleslaughter92 here. <clears throat> Holy shit, voice cracks from hell. And today we are back on Minecraft Tuttle Update 19 and this is part number 26 where we have a pigman hanging out on my bed and we have me with my beanie ready to enchant. You're my good luck charm, alright? You're my good luck charm. Oh shit, there's another one. Um, but this is not the only objective of today. Today we have quite a few things we want to do, but first let's enchant my beanie and go, boom. That's rather disappointing. That is really disappointing. Um, let me see if I have aqua affinity, because I'm sure I do. I'm sure I have an aqua affinity book somewhere. Because I enchanted a bunch of books before. Let's see. Sharpness, power, 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 protection, unbreaking, efficiency. Uh, unbreaking, power. Uh, wow, I have no aqua affinity. Well, that's great, guys. So. Fuck. Okay, well. I guess that's the, the set of armor. I guess we're done with it. Damn it. I was hoping I'd get something good. So now we're going to go ahead and just throw it all on. We're going to wear it. Screw it. Because it will give us protection and we're about to do some shit in the nether anyway. So we're going to need it. <clears throat> there, there, there. Oh man, look at all that. And we have blast protection, feather falling, blast protection, projectile protection, thorns, which is pretty good and then protection pretty sweet but today we are going to the nether I have something I would like to do um, I'm gonna be fixing that pathway in the nether making it look all badass and shit so we're gonna need hopefully just this much of uh, stone brick uh, and I just woke up I just woke up. Oh yeah, this is my furnace room. Not done yet, but let's start. We're going to need every single one of these. And I just uh, made this a little while ago, just a few minutes ago. And this is what I got. And it, it looks it looks all right. Doesn't look bad. I like it. I, uh, I'm going to be able to cook everything real easy. I'm, uh, I'm going to be changing the materials in here, of course, because I do not like that in the least. But first, let's see how many this gives us. This should give us at least two stacks. Hell, it might give us three stacks. No, two and a half gonna give us two and a half stacks yeah exactly two and a half but that's enough that's enough for what I need to do uh, now let's check on the slime let's see if we got any oh we did go ahead and shoot the fucker uh, do I have my looting sword yes all right put that up real quick yeah! Yeah, this slime spawner actually works fairly well. I got five slime out of that. Look at that. Five slime balls. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I just heard an enderman. I just heard an enderman. Alright, let me put up this slime and then we're gonna head over to the nether. Alright, where do I put slime? Do I put yeah, I put it in here, thought so. Alright. And <clears throat> we have a good amount of pickaxes. We should be fine. Is this our nether map or our overworld map? Overworld. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and just chunk this in here, actually. This will go with my armor. Here's my nether map. I won't need water at all. So let's just throw on a pickaxe. Oh fuck, I threw in the pickaxe. Damn it. 
There we go. Alright, there's our nether map, which is a great big U. That's great. That's great. Great big fucked up you. Okay, and we're gonna... Damn it, I keep forgetting that the nether portal's up here, not down there. Ah, uh, sorry. Drinking my breakfast drink. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, start working on this. There y'all two are. Where's my kitty? Did y'all eat her? Oh, there, there he or she is. Haven't decided if you're a boy or a girl yet. <laughs> I know that's fucked up. Um, there. That'll be enough of those for now. And we'll make some of these. No, we won't make those into slabs. What the fuck are those two pigmen doing? They're fucking around with my with my door. They need to quit. God, they're gonna break it. Alright. And I believe if I come down here Oh, son of a whore. Dead. Damn it. Dead. Dead. I'm not using my uh, my new controller, by the way. I might have mentioned this before, but it does not work on Minecraft. So I'm having to just use uh, my old controller, which is kind of a hassle, but eh, whatever. All right, so I think it's over here. Pretty sure it is. Oh, I should have made stairs. Oh, well. This guy's just camping up there. Fuck, there's a lot of them. There's a whole fucking lot of them. There's a whole lot of you fucks. Oh, I need a drink of fucking fire resist potion. Oh, so I do have something I'd like to talk to you guys about. Um, if you guys tuned in to Fox or CBS yesterday to watch the playoff games, y'all uh, to watch the uh, to watch the the uh, AFC and NFC championships, y'all would have seen that uh, the Seahawks made a miraculous comeback against the Green Bay Packers which was so exciting because I love the Seahawks I always have uh, since I was a little kid just because they never had a really good team Matt Hasselbeck I really liked him as a quarterback when he played for the Hawks he was a real he was a underrated quarterback um, but I liked the Seahawks growing up and I still do um, and seeing them make it to the Super Bowl twice in a row is great. And um, I've liked the Patriots since I was a kid as well. Since uh, they faced the Carolina Panthers in the Super Bowl, that's actually what got me hooked. Because I heard the story about Tom Brady, how he was, how he was a late draft, and uh, nobody thought he'd make it to the pros, and he did, and he won a Super Bowl. So that's really cool, and. I'm glad to see them back in the Super Bowl, both teams. And now we get to see the two the two most aggressive offenses in the NFL playing against each other. I don't care what anyone says. Both of those teams deserve to be there. And the way that the Patriots smacked the Colts last night, oh, it made me so happy. Because as most, as most of y'all will know, the Colts are one of my least favorite teams. They're number two on my least favorite teams list. Um, as y'all, as most of y'all do know, the Titans are my least favorite. Uh, I absolutely hate the uh, Titans. I think it's this way. But what the fuck? That could easily been death. 
And you little fucker, you actually hurt me. I need to drink one of these now. Um, but as I was saying, they have two of the most dynamic offenses in the NFL. And this Super Bowl is going to be so entertaining. It's going to be great because most of the time it's either a defense-based team or or an offensive-based team. But both of, the, both of these teams have great offense and great defense, so I'm fairly excited for it. And plus, they're two teams I really like. I honestly don't care which team wins. I'd like to see Brady take home that trophy once again, take home another Super Bowl ring. But he's already made history by going to six Super Bowls. No NFL quarterback has ever done that. And this is his sixth Super Bowl appearance. And, you know, he's won, he's won three of them. So if he wins this one, this will be his fourth Super Bowl ring. And if he wins, then he ties Dan Marino's record for most Super Bowl wins as a quarterback, I think. Or is it Terry Bradshaw who owns that record? One of you guys leave in the comment section below who holds that record. That'd be awesome if you could. And I know I do have a Steeler fan out there. Um, you guys probably don't think that I pay attention to uh, my comments. I do. I just don't always get the chance to uh, respond to them because I work, I'm pretty busy, and um, yeah, I know that one of y'all is a uh, is a Steeler fan, so let me know if it's Terry Bradshaw who has that record, and I think it might be Terry because I think he has five Super Bowl rings and Dan Marino has uh, four, or not Dan Marino, Joe Montana. What am I talking about, Dan Marino? Dan Marino only has two, I think. I don't know. I I used to be real big about this kind of thing because I used to uh, do uh, football analytics back in high school, and um, that was like my thing because because I was in football and my coaches uh, they wanted me to do a lot of background research on uh, on on the Super Bowls and whatnot, and on NFL records and shit, and so I did it, and it was <clears throat> it was fun. So yeah, but as I was saying, I kind of hope that Tom Brady and the Patriots win because I'd love to see them get another championship. I'd love to see Tom Brady get another one and just make his stamp on uh, on the record books again. I mean, he's already going to the Super Bowl more times than any other quarterback. And, you know, I'd, I'd love to see him just win. That'd be awesome. And my place is somewhere over here. Yeah, it's right through here. Okay. Now I need to make a staircase up over here. And th that's just not safe. I don't like that. Um, but... I like Russell Wilson. I like Russell Wilson and Marshawn Lynch from the Seahawks. I always have liked Marshawn Lynch ever since he was a Bill. And he's always been a very technical runner. He's one of those runners who's who's very fast and agile, but he's also very tough. You can't just bring the guy down. If you if you hit him with a tackle, he's not going down. He's going to He's going to more than likely shift out of your tackle, or he's going to fight for extra yards, which I really like about Marshawn Lynch. And then on the other hand, we have somebody I've watched since he was in college. Um, we got LeGarrette Blunt, And LeGarrette Blunt is a straight powerhouse running back who also has, uh, who also has technicality. He's very good at outmaneuvering players, and he's... He's one of those underrated running backs who I've been watching for many years. Like, no Sean Marino. He's just waiting for his chance to shine. That's how uh, Reggie Bush was. Reggie Bush just kept uh, kept fumbling. But I just, I feel like LeGarrette Blunt. he has a bright career in front of him. When he played for, for the Oregon Ducks, his team was amazing. 
And it wasn't just because of quarterback play. It was because of running back play. Whenever you have a run-dominated offense, it's not just because uh, it's not just because of your running back or your quarterback. Because, like uh, back in the back in the 2003 Falcons days, when they had Warwick Dunn, and uh, I think that's when they had Warwick Dunn. Yeah, I think it was Warwick Dunn and Michael Vick uh, that they had. I know they had Michael Vick in 2003, um, but in those days, the uh, the run was from both of them. Both of them had a thousand yards in a season, which a quarterback with a thousand yards is preposterous. He broke the record and still holds the record for most rushing yards for a starting quarterback, which is outstanding. I always liked Michael Vick. I look past the the NFL players and their flaws. And all the stupid shit they do. Like, he might have done dog fights, but he already did time for it. He already he already served his time in jail, so who cares? He's I I think that that he uh, I think that he still gets he still gets a lot of shit from that when he shouldn't. <laughs> but that's just my opinion. I love dogs. I have several dogs of my own. I'm not defending him saying he was right. I'm saying that he did his time. Let it go. Like the whole Ray Rice thing. I mean, maybe the chick was asking for a punch in the face. That's... <laughs> I don't know that's fucked up to say, but damn. Whoa. Speaking of fucked up, this guy's about to get fucked up. Shooting at me and fucking up my walkway. How dare you. You cock. Get it. Get it. You son of a bitch. But. Who the fuck is. He's shooting at me from over here. Motherfucker. Fucking up my landscape over here, buddy. God dang it. But the whole Ray Rice thing, I, I think it's all blown out of proportion. She still married the motherfucker. So why would you just indefinitely suspend him from the NFL? They almost banned the guy, which was fucked up. And then they started putting out all those uh, commercials for domestic violence on... Uh, I think it was CBS or Fox, can't remember, but they started putting out those commercials, making a big deal about it, when it's not even a big deal. Y'all can call me insensitive as if y'all want, but that's just my view on it. She forgave him, she married him, he's fucking rich, of course she's gonna marry him. Or maybe it's true love, or the bitch is crazy. Who knows? But still, it doesn't matter, because they got married. That's my take on it, and I think I'm out of my uh, fire resist. <clears throat> I sure am. Huh, nice. So this video is actually uh, quite, a <clears throat> quite a long video. Um, so I was talking for like 10 minutes before that. Where'd that gas go? Who gives a fuck? But, I don't know, maybe the bitch was just crazy. Or maybe she, maybe she was literally asking to get punched in the face, and he's like, Okay, I'll just knock you out then. <laughs> and then he drug her out of the fucking elevator. I thought that was the clincher right there. I thought that was fucking funny. He knocks her out and then casually drags her out of the elevator. Yes, it was fucked up. I'm not defending him either. But she forgave him, so shit, who cares? He did his time, he's still doing his time. He has the worst punishment known to man. He has to be married to that chick. Like, seriously, that's just hell on earth. I don't care what any man says, marriage is the real is is the real penitentiary. <laughs> oh man, that's so fucked up. That sounds so that sounds so terrible. Um oh, man. But that's just my thoughts on it. But back to the Super Bowl. We're going to be seeing the two most prolific... Oh, the reason I was mentioning that 
was because LeGarrette Blunt actually did something similar in uh, college. He actually did something very similar. He got uh, some dude was John Adam. It was at the. Uh, it was after the Boise State game. They were playing Boise, I believe. I'm pretty sure it was Boise. And Legarrette Blunt. Uh, this was his junior year, I believe. Was it? Was it his juniors? It was the last game of the season for him, and the last game he would play in college, um, because he got suspended for the rest uh, for his whole senior year. He got suspended for it. And I thought that that was incredibly fucked up. Because he it was after the Boise State game, and some dude was just jawing at him, and LeGarrette Blunt just knocked him out. Just one hit him. Just... Okay. Sorry about that, guys. My PVR messed up. And today, actually, might be my last day of, uh, of having to say that, because my Elgato is on the way. It should be here tomorrow. Uh, which is going to be Tuesday for those of you who don't know the day of the week. Um, but as I was saying, LeGarrette Blunt got suspended for his entire senior year because he knocked someone the fuck out. And, you know, I totally get that. You're supposed to have more poise than that. And he was on national television. I get it. But when it came around to him getting drafted, everybody overlooked him. He went undrafted. He turned into a free agent. He didn't get drafted in into the NFL, and that was total bullshit. I was, I'm still a huge Oregon Duck fan. Like Garrett Blunt was the reason I became an an Oregon Duck fan because I used to watch his high flying offense. Watching them against Boise every year was so good because he was such a prolific runner and so fast and so powerful. Like, um, imagine Jerome Bettis, um, for you who's a Steeler fan, or Rashad Mendenhall, when he was actually good. Which some could argue was never, but I'd like to say that he had a point where he was good. Rashad Mendenhall was a really good running back at a time, and holy fuck, where am I getting shot from? Oh, you motherfuckers. I hate when they're up there. Hit? Nope. You cocks. Pussy ass motherfuckers. You wanna piss off, mate? No, I'm gonna just let them keep shooting. They can't hurt me. I have blast protection, thorns, and I have my fire resist pot on. I'm sorry I went really quiet right there. I was just really annoyed. But, um, LeGarrette Blunt is what got me into watching the Oregon Ducks. And, once you know it, the Oregon Ducks have a potential Heisman Trophy winner this year. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. And you know what would be great? If he went to the Patriots and they had him as a backup for Tom Brady for the next year or so, or until Tom Brady decides, you know what, I'm going to hang up the reins. But I don't expect him to do it anytime soon. I really don't. I expect Brady to play for at least three to four more years because he's still throwing like a god. He's still the best quarterback in the league, if you ask me. Peyton Manning is a close second, but he's not good at closing out He's not good at closing out games. He's good at making comebacks in games, but he cannot close out games for shit. He starts making mistakes and overcompensating on his throws. Um, but, as I was saying, the way that the NFL handles certain ordeals is just fucked up. Like the whole LeGarrette Blunt ordeal. Um, the... Uh, the Ray Rice ordeal, even even the Michael Vick ordeal, also the Adrian Peterson ordeal. He was disciplining his kid, and he gets suspended. Now, down here in the South, when 
when you're growing up in a southern household, getting whipped by a switch is an everyday thing. If you fuck up, you get whipped by a switch. That's just how it is. That's just how life is here in the south. Y'all might be like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? But that's just how it is. I live in South Texas. This is something I grew up with, so I'm easily able to relate. And he's from Texas as well. So I, I know that I know what it's like to grow up under that influence. So before everyone goes and judges him, they need to realize that's just his upbringing. That's not his fault. He's a product of his society. Um, but back to the Super Bowl. Who, who do I think is going to win? I think the Patriots. I think the Patriots are going to win. It's going to be by... It's going to be by 10 points. They're going to win by 10 points. Because the, uh, the Seattle Seahawks, they're going to contain Tom Brady for the first uh, for the first quarter. They're going to be shutting him down. He's going to be having to make adjustments. And then after that, after he, after he finds the weak points in their defense, he finds where Mark... Sh- where um where Sherman is weak is that once he finds that it's done it's done what's done is done um because honestly I don't think Sherman is that good a player I don't think that Sherman deserves to be to be on the cover of Madden I don't he's not that good if anybody's that good they need they need to go and take a look at Darrell Revis put him on the cover of Madden because he has proved time and time again that he's the best corner in the NFL. When he was with the Jets, he was the only thing keeping them guys afloat, other than uh, Bart Scott. And if you guys are like, what the fuck, how does he know all this stuff? I used to watch a lot of football. I used to read a lot about football. And... I paid attention. I, I mean, I was a f- football analytic. Or a football analyzer, as you could call it, if that sounds more appropriate. But that's just how I was. That's just how I am. I love I love doing that. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but as I was saying, it all depends on which running back is going to get a hot hand first. Is it going to be a LeGarrette Blunt? Or Marshawn Lynch. Both of them have... and They look... Their running style is almost the same. LeGarrette Blunt's bigger, but he's more powerful. He's not as fast, but he's more powerful. Whereas Marshawn Lynch, you never know when he's done with his run. You never do. Because he has a lot of power for his size, and he also is incredibly fast. But whose defense is going to shut down whose? In my opinion, I think that the Patriots' defense is better suited for the, uh, for... Fuck you! Get out the way! Get out the way! I think it's better suited against the, uh, Seattle Seahawks than any other team they face this year. Because the Seattle Seahawks, their players... Their whole team is really fast, and they depend on uh, when you get them into man coverage. They haven't faced a team who has good man coverage corners yet, just good zone coverage corners, not man coverage. And for those of you who don't know the difference between man coverage and zone coverage, let me break it down for you real quick. Man coverage is when you have someone one-on-one covering a receiver. Zone coverage is when you have a corner safety or linebacker or even a defensive lineman um, going out into an area and and guarding that area, making sure no no one catches the ball inside of it. That's zone coverage. And the reason that that they they, uh, benefit off of this is because is because of, uh, what's his name, Russell Wilson. He's a very prolific quarterback. He's he's a runner and a passer, and he can pass on the run. Which is... Where the fuck is this gas? There. Motherfucker, you're dead. But, 
Russell Wilson is one of those quarterbacks who has a lot of variables about him, and it's hard to read what he's going to do. But the reason I think that the Patriots are going to match up so well because of the speed on their defense and the fact that their man coverage on their corners is outstanding. You got you got Dexter McCourty and you have Darrell Revis, two very great man coverage players. But Darrell Revis, he's also really good at zone coverage. And that's that's the only way they'll be able to get get points on the board if they get it in zone coverage. Because the Patriots' man coverage is too good. It's too good for it's too good for them. They're not going to be able to keep up. They're not going to be able to to launch it down the field like they have been. Like in the last game, in their in their game against the uh, Packers, how they hail married that up and they got the touchdown. Well, it wasn't even a hail mary. It was a beautiful pass by Russell Wilson. I'll give him that, but. Do I, do I think that that's going to happen against the Patriots? No. No, their coverage is too good. If Russell Wilson targets Darrell Revis more than three times, well, no, more than four times in this game, he's going to get intercepted. He's going to get picked off because Darrell Revis will learn the arc of the football, how he, how he tosses it, because there's nothing like learning firsthand. That's the best way to learn. You have to you can't just study game film and be like, "Okay, I got this." You have to actually you have to actually play. You can't just say you got this and then you don't. Well, this is my bridge. Yeah. Yay, my bridge is done. I I don't know if uh, anyone stuck around this long. But hashtag Pats, put that in the, uh, you know what, hashtag Pats versus Hawks. Put that in the comment section and put who you think's going to win. Uh, if you've made it this far, because I am going to keep recording for a few more minutes. But, uh, that's my prediction. I think that, uh, Darrell Revis is going to play a huge factor. And the Seattle Seahawks defense is going to have to step up. They're going to have to step up a lot if they want to contain the if they want to contain the Patriots because the Patriots are too good of a team. They're a well-balanced team and every time they're a well-balanced team, they win the Super Bowl. Every time they've gone into the Super Bowl with a passing oriented team, they've lost. Like uh, when they played against the uh, Panthers and the Eagles, when they had Curtis Martin, they won. They just won. There was no, uh, actually, no, it wasn't Curtis Martin. It was, it was Kevin Folk and someone else. Was it Curtis Martin? I know they had Kevin Folk, but Kevin Folk. But that's that's all I remember. And for those of you who are like, did he play for the Rams? No, that's Marshall. That's that's Marshall Falk. That's Marshall Falk. Marshall. Marshall. Whatever. Um, but you know what? I think that's going to do it. This video is going to be really long and really hard for me to edit. So I'm going to just stop right now so I can get it done within a few minutes. Because it's 1.30 already. And I want to have this up by... I want to have this up by 3. So I'm going to have some time to edit it. But whatever. But I hope you guys enjoyed, and if y'all did, don't forget to smack that like button. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed the, a little bit of football talk, a little bit different from normal. But nevertheless, I hope y'all enjoyed. And um, maybe tomorrow I'll uh, talk about my predictions in the Pro Bowl or my predictions for MVP, defensive player, uh, offensive player, and whatnot, all the prestigious awards. I'll let y'all know my thoughts on those, who I think is going to take home what. But... That's it for me today, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed. If so, smack the like button, comment, tell me what you thought, um, any predictions y'all have about anything, and uh, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and share on social media. That was actually a really good outro, and this is Cool Starting 82. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys later. Peace!